In this uh, short video, I want to address three main questions. First, what are the legal principles or mechanisms that courts can use to address climate change issues? Secondly, what are the particular challenges they face? And thirdly, how optimistic am I about the court's ability to adapt in the future? Now, starting with legal principles, I think it's critical to keep in mind that we have at international level, the underpinning of the Paris Agreement 2015. That was a remarkable achievement. It brought together more than 190 countries who committed themselves to take effective action to climate change. And that was to take the effect of nationally determined contributions to achieve those goals. And those were to be up to the country's highest ambition. Now that is being put to the test in Glasgow at the COP26 meeting in a couple of weeks time. But what will emerge from that are a series of national commitments and what is needed are effective national measures to put those into practice. Now undoubtedly the best way of achieving that for courts at national level is through legislation. In this country we have the Climate Change Act of 2008 which is a very a strong framework for uh, legislative action. It requires government to produce, to commit itself to net zero emissions by 2050 and to achieve budgets, successive five-year budgets, to work towards that goal. Now, we are now looking at the budgets up to 2038. I've no doubt that if and when it's required, the courts will be able to use that legal mechanism to hold governments, the government to its commitments. Where courts don't have such a statutory underpinning, then they have to look to other methods. And some countries have used the human rights conventions. Others have used constitutional guarantees of right to life or guarantees of a healthy environment. But what is interesting is how different jurisdictions have found different ways to give real teeth to the Paris Agreement commitments. Now, what are the challenges? Uh, to my mind, climate change cases are no different in principle from other types of cases. We have to decide them according to the evidence that comes before us and in accordance with the legal systems which we operate. And we can adapt and develop those systems to meet the effective challenges of climate change. I don't think the scientific issues are necessarily any different from those that come before us in other cases. But I think the big challenge is actually to give teeth to our orders. It's one thing to hold a government to account and to make an order holding it in default. It's another to make sure that it remedies those deficiencies and to police those changes. And it's interesting to see how different countries have been able to do that within their own systems. But I think it's going to be a big challenge for each country to show how it can do that. Finally, what about the challenges for the future? I am very optimistic that the courts will be able to adapt to meet the challenges as they come. In this country, the common law has over the centuries proved itself remarkably resilient and flexible to meet changes, not least those of the Industrial Revolution in the 19th century. And the same will happen in the future. We have a strong act. We have the ability to show how that can be used, and I'm no doubt we will do that. Other countries, I'm quite sure, will prove no less effective. My experience of looking at climate change cases over the last decade has shown how they have been able to do that. So I think the, the challenge really now is for governments to come up with effective contributions and national measures. I've no doubt, for my part, the courts will do their bit in making sure that those take effect. Thank you very much.